Hello everyone, in this video we're going to look at different ways of displaying categorical variables. So just as a review, a categorical variable deals with data that investigates a category of a certain case. So in this first example, we're going to look at our categorical variable being eye color. So the data that we're collecting is whether or not the person has blue, brown, green, or some other eye color. In this first section, we're going to look at a frequency table. A frequency table uses category names for each row. For example, what we have here are different eye colors. So we see each eye color has its own row and records the total count of each value in our data set. A relative frequency table, which we will construct here, gives the percentage in each category. And we'll learn uh, and look at how to compute those percentages. So part A says using a group's data, create a frequency table and relative frequency table with eye color as the categorical variable. So just a review here. So our data will look like the following. We'll go around asking people, what color eye do you have? And so they might say blue or brown. Maybe another person has brown. Maybe another person has brown. So in this way, for each case or each person, we are going to be told what their eye color is. And when we have somebody in that category, we're going to put like a tick mark, say, in our frequency. At the end of our analysis, we're going to count the total number of people in each category. So if we look at just this part of our table here, just this part of our table with the category labels and the frequency count. This part is called the frequency table. It's a table that keeps track of the frequency or the count or number in each of the categorical or in each category of our categorical variable. Then the relative frequency is what we're gonna compute on this right-hand side. So let's compute those relative frequencies. So to compute this percentage, what we're figuring out is the percentage of all of the people that we asked who have each color, each eye color. So what we wanna do is compute uh, the number in each category and divide that by the total number of people in our sample. So let's first figure out what our total is here. To do that, we wanna add up the counts Oops, let me get back to my page here. We want to add up the counts in each category. So I'm going to label total at the bottom here. Often total is going to be represented in our final row of such a table. So I'm going to give you some time to add up the counts in each category and figure out how many total people we have in our study. Are you getting 23? Awesome, I am as well. So this is our N or our sample size. Now to compute the relative frequency of each category, we wanna compute the part of our total that is in each category. So for blue eye color, we see we have five people with blue eyes and there's a total of 23 people. So if we take this fraction and compute its decimal, we'll get 0 0.2174. And I encourage you to check that on your own calculator. All right, so we have this proportion of the people in our study uh, that have blue eyes. So to create a percentage from this proportion, what we do is move the decimal over twice. And the reason is because a percentage means part of a hundredth. So right now we're looking at this decimal as part of one total whole or one total sample of people, but we wanna know the percentage of that sample. So for us, we'd start with the 0.2174. To make this decimal percentage, we move that decimal place over twice and we're given, we get 21.74%. I'm going to write that in my table, 
So just to recap, that means 21.74% of the people in my study had blue eyes. So now I'll let you pause the video and compute each of the percentages or relative frequency of the remaining three categories. All right, now let's compare together. So for brown eyes, we should be getting 56.52%. For green eyes, we're getting 8.7%. And other, we're getting 13.04%. And then just to finish off this table, often we'll look at just the total people in our study. Well, the total people would be all 23 out of all 23. So that would be 100%. And what we should see is if we add up all of the percentages that we just computed, so add up each uh, part that we're investigating or each category that we're looking at, our total should be 100. And now you might get that your total is slightly off from 100. Maybe it's say 100.01% or 99.99%. And that's okay. Uh, typically that just comes uh, about with various rounding. So maybe you rounded one decimal up and another one lower, uh, but overall you got something close to 100. All right, so now let's look at some graphical ways of displaying such data. So when we're in this situation of having one categorical variable, we can represent this data using bar charts or pie charts. A bar chart displays on the horizontal axis the category, or the categories rather, that we're looking at. And then the size or length of the bar is the frequency or the number of people, number of cases that we have in each category. So to draw that bar chart, we wanna first draw a set of axes. So our vertical and horizontal axes. I'm gonna draw arrows here to indicate that my axes for my vertical direction go in both directions. So again, vertically, we wanna display the frequency. And horizontally, we wanna display our categorical variable. In this situation, it's eye color. And then now on the horizontal axis, I'm going to place all three or four rather of my categories. So my categories include blue, brown, green, and other. And then I notice that the frequency, the largest frequency I have is brown with 13. So I want to make sure my frequency, the scale heel here, goes up to 14, 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we'll go to 15 just to make sure we're including everything. I'm just going to bold every fifth tick mark. That way it's easier to count for us later. Awesome. All right, so now we're gonna fill in our bar chart with bars. Again, we'll have one bar for each category and the height of the bar will be the count or the frequency of cases in that category. So I'll encourage you to pause the video and draw in those bars for yourself. Awesome, so let's take a look and compare our work. So your graph should be looking something like this. A few highlights that I wanna point out. So first of all, a bar graph is different than a histogram. So in what ways are bar, bar graphs or bar charts different than histograms? Well, for a bar chart in particular, we are looking at categorical variables. So on the horizontal axis or our bins rather, uh, are categories. So here we're gonna have a bin for each category. And now a category is a descriptor uh, for the variable that we're investigating. So in this situation or with bar charts or with categorical variables, our horizontal axis is not numerical. So we don't have an order. We don't increase from zero to whatever number we're looking at. So also note that these categories can be in any order. 
because they're not numerical. And so one other thing for uh, bar charts, because we're not looking at numerical data, we want to space apart the bars. And this way it just notifies or signifies to the, the viewer that these bars are distinct, not numerical, just different categories. So I'll just write that down. So include space, include space between bins. Awesome. So take a moment to pause the video and again, make sure that uh, your graph uh, looks similar to the one here and double check that you have all the frequencies uh, labeled correctly. All right, and when you're ready, let's look at another way to represent this categorical variable. Uh, and that is in a pie chart. So for a pie chart, we represent our whole with a large circle or pie, which is where this type of chart or graph gets its name. So our full circle includes the entire sample that we've um, collected data on. And then we make sections or wedges in this pie chart corresponding to the proportion that each category takes up. So let's look at some examples. So for us, I like to start with the largest wedge or the largest uh, percentage of my sample or the category with the largest percentage. That way it just helps me to start from a bigger wedge and then I can fill in the smaller wedge. So for us, which category has the most people or the largest percentage? Brown. So let's first draw this brown wedge. So the brown wedge will take up 56.52% of my pie. So we don't need to be too exact here, but we do wanna, uh, or we can estimate this wedge by thinking, okay, well, 56 is near 50% of the pie. So 50% would be exactly half. So I'm just gonna draw in exactly half here. Okay, ish. <laughs> And so we want our wedge to be a little bit bigger than that. So we can estimate here what we might want. So a little bit bigger. Well, if it was 60%, that would be 10% bigger. So we'd want another, uh, another 10th of our wedge or another 10th of our pie to be brown. We don't have quite that much though. So I'm gonna do a little bit less than a 10th. So I'm gonna draw in here about, keep that line here and do one about like that. And then what I'm gonna do just to be as clear as possible is label that wedge with the percentage that it should be taking up. That way it's really clear to the reader how much of our pie is that brown. And by how much, I mean what percentage of the pie is brown. All right, so now let's continue. So our next uh, largest wedge is the blue eye category and that's at 21%. So 21%, that's about 20%. So how much of the pie should we shade or select now? Well, one way to think about or estimate that is to think, well, how many 20% go into 100%? Or how much, how many times does 20 cents go into 100 cents? five times. So 20% is one fifth of our entire pie. So I'm gonna estimate here what about one fifth should be. And I'm gonna label that section blue and label it with its 21.74%. All right, and so now I have the other category which is about 13. So I'm gonna draw on a wedge about 13% and that'll be other. And then the last little wedge that we have left over is the green, which is 13.04%. So our pie chart should look something like this. So take a moment and pause the video and make sure you've uh, been able to draw a pie chart and double check that all of the wedges are accurate according to their relative frequency. All right, so on this page, we just have two final questions. So in this example, we wanna answer the following questions using proportions uh, from the data. So our first question is, what proportion of the group has blue eyes? So I'll give you a moment to write down your answer. Awesome, well, the proportion is the same as the relative frequency of our data. So if we're looking for the proportion, 
of the total who have blue eyes, we just need to look at the frequency or relative frequency of our sample with blue eyes. And we find that is 21.74%. So if we wanted to calculate that again, five out of the 23 people had blue eyes, which is 0.2174 of our entire whole, which as a percentage is 21.74%. And now let's, if we wanted to write our answer in a complete sentence, which is often useful because if we're just writing numbers for our answer, uh, if someone's looking at our work, it might not be clear what that number is representing. Also, we wanna get practice in communicating numerical values to each other or to other, to uh, create, uh, communicating numerical numbers and have them make sense or give them meaning. So to construct a sentence answer, we might say 21% of the group has blue eyes. So I'll write that down. Awesome work. All right, what about this last question? What proportion of the group has green or brown eyes? So take a moment to pause the video and write down an answer. And maybe not just write down the answer, but try to do, uh, write down your thinking, write down what computations you make to find out uh, the solution here. All right, so let's look together. So we want the proportion of the group that has green or brown eyes. So if we look, we know that the total count of people with green eyes is two and blue brown eyes is 13. So two people have green eyes, 13 people have brown eyes. So in total, that would include two plus 13 people. So we know two plus 13 people are in one of these categories. And in this situation, we're assuming that somebody is not in both categories. So if we labeled them as brown, they're not also green. So we're not considering people who have maybe one eye color brown, one green, or mixed eye color. We're just considering each person being in only one category. So that means we have two plus 13, which is 15 people in this green or blue, sorry, green or brown categories. And again, we have the same total number of people, 23. So the proportion, coming in the green or brown group would be 15 out of 23, which as a decimal would be 0.6522. As a percentage would be 65.22%. So now I, I want you to try writing a sentence using that answer. All right, so we can check together. So a sentence would look like 65.22% of the group, since the group is our whole that we're determining what the percentage of that is in these two categories. So 65.22% of the group has green or brown eyes. All right, awesome work. Thanks for listening.